hello 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 making sure that there's sound in the room making sure we look all right <laughs> making sure we look right all right It's your girl Razia J and I'm back with another video. If this is your first time landing on my channel and seeing my face, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so happy that you are here. I say this every video, but it truly means the world to me that you decided to click on this video and rock with Ray. If it's for five minutes or for all of my videos, thank you so much for rocking with me. Thank you so much for choosing this platform as an avenue for you to learn more about the social work profession. We are growing over here. There are so many future social work students that are reaching out, that are tapping in, that are joining the tribe, and it means the world to Hey me. guys, I'm back. My camera died. One of the joys and downfalls of having a YouTube channel and having equipment going is that sometimes your camera battery dies and you have to remember where you left off. So I believe I was talking about the importance of really asking questions when you have these informal meetings and making your mark. I know oftentimes students feel like informal meetings is an opportunity for them to come casually or just to show up. And the reality of the matter is your impressions matter. First, second, third, and last impressions all matter. It's not how you end the thing. It's always how you start a thing. That very first impression is going to leave a marker on the mind of the person that you're interacting with about the type of person you are. So if they are a professor, address them as professor such and such. If they are a doctor, address them as doctor such and such. They worked for that title and designation, so you should respect it. So that's one thing I wanted to say before we got into the questions, but I do feel like it's important to have questions. The reason why we ask questions as individuals outside of social work, outside of going to school, outside of anything else that you utilize questions for, the main reason people ask questions is to gain clarity and understanding. When you are applying for a BSW, MSW, or PhD program, or DSW program, or any program that is edu educationally based, it is important for you to ask the questions that would give you the clarity on the direction that you should be going. Without further ado, let's jump into what questions you should ask and why. So this question is really for my BSW and MSW applicants. The reason why I say that is because as a PhD or DSW applicant, I think it's really important to prove your competency and not to use this time that you have with the director of a program to ask them questions that you can research. The very first question is, what is the mission and values of this program? The reason why we wanna know the mission and the values is because it sets the tone for your educational pathway. If you are looking to be a macro social worker and your focus is on international social work, you want to make sure that the program that you are going to has the resources and the opportunities to allow you to flush out that passion without it pulling from something that you are not really passionate about. So when I was looking at my three programs, I looked at the mission and I asked myself, how does my overarching goals align with the missions and values of these programs? And that really helped me narrow down what program I should have actually applied to. Many times when you're researching a program, you probably have a list of like 10 programs that seem good. They seem like a great fit. You see the value and the benefit of being a student at that said program, right? But when you start to ask yourself, what is the mission and the value of this program? It really fine tunes it to your career pathway and what you want to do as a professional social worker. And I think if you're asking a program director or admissions, what is your mission and your values? They're going to realize that you are really invested in your future as a social worker and that you want to make sure that you are doing things that aligns with your overarching goals. This question number two for my BSW and MSW applicants, but this is number one for my PhD applicants. What resources and supports are available this is a big one. If I'm going back to school or if I'm starting my academic journey as a BSW student, 
I want to know what supports are out there. What resources can I tap into at this university? Whether that is funding, scholarships, disability office, um, writing lab, tutoring, whatever those resources are that are important to you, make sure that your university has them available to you if you need to use them. The reason why PhD students would be asking this question or be or doctoral level students will be asking this question is really because you want to know at this point of the game, I have been in this profession. I know what I need to thrive as a student. And I also know what I need my, my program to provide for me. So if I was asking this question to an admissions director or a director of a PhD program or DSW program, I would ask them what funding is available for students in your program and what research topics gets the most funding not because it's going to change my research topic or my passion but it's going to help me see if i should pursue this program if they have the funding to support me do they have tuition remission and at the bsw and the msw program you're really asking questions about scholarships right financial aid how does this work what does it look like if i don't get enough loans to cover it are there other resources that i can tap into Asking these questions about support and resources is really crucial in making a decision if this is the program you should apply to. The third question, what opportunities will I have as a student here for hands-on experience, field experience, and real life application experience? Social work is a profession that thrives on real life application of things. And you wanna ensure that the program that you're applying to allows you to have those real life experiences um, valuable internship opportunities and hand on hands on experience. You want to make sure that there is a field office in place that could provide you with the supports that you need to find your field experience. I would say this finding a field placement as a BSW and MSW student is really challenging because unless you have connection points in this profession, you are going to be running in circles trying to find a great fit for you. The reason why you want to know what real life experience I will gain at this program, like whether that's research labs, whether that's a, 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 a field office that's really thriving and supportive to their students, you want to know this going into your application process because you are going to have to take a field class. You are going to have a field placement and you need to know what does that look like? Will I be looking for the field placement? Will you be supporting me in that endeavor? Do you have partnerships in the community that provides whether um, in-person or virtual opportunities for students? What is the expectation on my part as a student here to find my own field placement? And it's crucial. It can make and break the future of your social work journey because without a field placement, you are not going to graduate. So asking those questions before you even apply really sets the tone for, okay, this person is invested in their value sets. They want to make sure that this program aligns. They need to know what supports we have and how they're going to fund their education. And now they're asking me about field placement. They're on the money. The fourth question, and I think it's really important to ask this, what are you guys looking for as an admissions committee? This is not asking a hard question, right? The admissions committee knows what they're looking for. They know the ideal candidate. You asking this question allows you to see, okay, they are looking for students that are passionate about X, Y, and Z. And this is important in the doctoral level because when you are applying to programs, you want to make sure that your research topic will get you into the program. You want to make sure that there is a, a professor or a committee chair that will be able to work with you as you go through the research process to get you in the door. You don't want to apply for a program. Let's say you are you are passionate about um, food insecurities, right? You want to make sure the programs that you are applying to as a doctoral student have funding for that, that they have a committee chair that specializes in that, or if they don't, other departments that could support you on your research journey. And for the BSW and MSW program, it's important to know what are you looking for? What is your ideal candidate, especially at the MSW program, if you're going into advanced standing, 
ask this question. What are you looking for? For me, when I asked this question to Fordham, they were very clear with me, right? That if you want to do advanced standing and you want to be in the full-time program, we are looking for a student that is able to work well under pressure. We are looking for a student that can commit 60 hours a week. These are the type of answers you're going to get. They're, the commitment level that they're looking for in their students and what their expectation is. And when you gather that information, you can ask yourself, am I the best fit for this program or is it going to set me up for failure? And asking yourself hard questions really allows you to apply to the program that's best for you. And honestly, guys, those are the top four questions I believe that every student should ask an admissions department or a director of a program if you are meeting with them. You wanna make sure that you are applying to the programs that are the best fit for you. I always tell students when they are going through the application process, do your research, reach out to the programs, talk to students, talk to faculty, talk to staff, don't be weird, but really ask the questions that will help you make a good, educated decision about hitting submit on your application. The one thing you don't want to do is apply for a program, get into the program, start the program, and then realize it's lacking everything that you need to be successful. It's about looking back at the end of the program and feeling like, wow, this program really set me up for success. It's looking for a school that will work well for you and put you on a path to success that is going to be beneficial for you in the long run as you enter into this profession. So I hope this video was helpful. If you found it helpful, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment down below. Let me know where you are on your application process and have you ever reached out to an admissions department. If you would like to know in detail how to frame these questions and how not to be so nervous when asking these questions, I'm gonna leave a job form down below for my upcoming webinar and you are free to join. Fill out the form, join the webinar, and I'm going to help social work future students figure out how to apply for the best programs. We want to make sure that your application is in way before the cycle closes so you are not rolling, you know, rolling admissions where they keep accepting people. I want to make sure that you're successful. So I'm going to drop that link down below. You can join the webinar. It's going to be in November. And we're going to go through these things in the webinar and some more. I'm thankful that you watched today's video. And until next time, bye.